welcome back to the channel today i want to talk about outriders and what outriders needs to continue to be a successful game now i've touched upon this in other videos but i really wanted to dive a little bit further into it and and talk about it in a little bit more length so hit the like button if you wish to it helps my channel out immensely just you hitting that like button leave me a comment down below telling me what your favorite character is right now and what build you're using on that character because i need some ideas for myself subscribe hit the little notification bell so you know when i'm going live on live stream as well as when videos go live and please 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 follow me on twitter i need more followers link is in the video description so i'm going to be talking here in a kind of perfect world scenario so let's just say that they're not got their hands tied anymore they're not fixing bugs they're not making patches they're not having to deal with inventory wipes. They have perfect running servers and fast connections to other people. The perfect world scenario. Because right now, the things that I'm going to suggest and talk about aren't really realistic because they have to fix existing problems and their hands are tied right now to that idea, to that concept of having to fix things and not really talk about the future. What I do feel is necessary, though, is that they do need to mention about the future. They don't have to put any plans in, you know, to say, I oh, want this date, this is coming out. Just say, we're working towards a thing, expect it in the future. Just so that the people who play this game know that consistently playing a game is actually going to work out to be useful because something will happen where everything you're doing right now is worth the time and energy put into the game. Now, the reason why I say that is very quickly with this game since release i have that same feeling that i have with destiny 2 now destiny 2 got to a point for me where it was there's nothing to do because i don't do raids and stuff everything i was doing solo building up light building up power it amounted to nothing because there was nothing to use it for there was nothing to do and it's kind of one of the issues and problems and challenges that a solo player faces in a kind of pve looter shooter or you know with destiny an extra bit of pvp too there's no reason to chase all of these good armors good weapons good power because it ultimately led to nothing it was just arbitrary number chasing which is fine for a certain amount of time but when you've been doing it for years on a game like destiny and then you move to outriders and you really really love the game and you really want it to succeed but then you kind of have that same feeling alarm bells start to ring so the problem is, is that once you get to challenge tier 15 and you have one build that's consistent enough to run through some of the expeditions on gold, you're pretty much set. You don't ever have to do or change anything on that character. You don't ever have to do anything other than complete those expeditions that you're doing at challenge tier 15 to get legendaries. Now, legendaries are a good end game experience because there are so many to collect and a lot of people are collectors and they want to hoard and they want to get all the best stat rolls and min max you know that is a really good end game experience but i don't think casual players and solo players really care that much about those little kind of minimalistic aspects of end game experiences they want something big they want something to do you know and while chasing legendaries is great i don't think it's the be all and end all for everybody so there are a lot of people thriving and succeeding in this game because they are very much detail orientated and want to really really hammer out some incredible builds and get everything absolutely perfect across all four characters I think realistically though for most of the community that is not the case once you get one character to a point of completing challenge tier 15s there's nothing else to do and i think a part of that as well is having to conform to the meta on all four characters there is one specific build that will be able to be easily utilized and easily built to be able to do challenge tier 15s and once you get to that point then you don't need to do anything else but even if you wanted to do anything else the other builds are not strong enough to be able to compete at challenge tier 15 so you'll automatically revert back to the build that you know and love and you know that works and completes challenge tiers 15s on so there's no unique fun builds that you can make i know there are some content creators that do a really good job of making other classes and other builds very very viable but it is a lot of time and energy and effort in the game to get to that point so i think builds need to be a little bit more accessible and a little bit more balanced so that characters can experience different builds without having to worry too much about anything else i also think that the skill tree could do with an extra few skill points available for the characters so that you don't have to build into one specific 
um, tree, top, middle, or bottom. Maybe you could mix it up by going starting on the top, getting some bonus firepower, and then going down into the middle to get some health, and then down in the bottom to get some anomaly power, so that you can have a balanced build as well as you know just anomaly power or just bonus firepower. There needs to be slightly more skill points available to make that viable and make 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 you be able to do that. And the real problem is is that a lot of the mods or legendary weapons are pretty much set in stone what you use. Think of something like Fortress. Fortress, for any Anomaly Power build, is a must. You have to have it, which means then you don't get to have any of the other tier 3 mods or try to build around it or have fun or try something different or unique. You know, Killing Spree is the same too. Killing Spree is very useful, very over the top, and I don't think any of these really good viable mods should be bought down. I think everything else should be bought up. But the problem comes where you don't, ever have to worry about getting any other legendary weapons because they're not viable because they're not useful right now and then at end game apparently the rumor is is that specific legendaries drop behind specific expeditions now whether or not that means you unlock them by completing it and then they drop anywhere or they can only drop in that specific expedition I don't know, but those are the rumors. And if this is true or not true, I think people can fly need to actually step up and say, this is true, this is not true. And if it is true, say, these items unlock when you complete Eye of the Storm or a random set of items unlock when you complete X expedition, whichever expedition is the one that they want to talk about. Then people can plan, they can look around, they can try out different content and they have a reason to do certain things throughout the game instead of always completing Archways of Enoch over and over and over again, or Chemtown over and over and over again. I think there really needs to be some balancing to the timing issues for gold, silver, and bronze. Archways of Enoch, I always finish with at least four minutes on the clock clean, so you can bring that down by two minutes, and then take something like Boomtown and extend it back to what it originally was, because it's just ridiculous how easy it is to miss out on a gold when it comes to boomtown unless you have a ridiculously overpowered build i think that expeditions could be used in a way of like i don't know having a specific one per week that you can go into and it costs you 100k drop pod resources enemies are a little bit faster they run around move quicker or they have some sort of special ability or modifier or perk on there so it becomes a little bit more challenging and then the drop pod resources drops i mean the drop pod drops twice as much stuff as it usually does for gold silver or bronze so it gives people you know like a nightfall in destiny something to chase every single week with a chance of getting extra stuff and i think as well players don't have incentive to go beyond completing a couple of challenge tiers on challenge tier 15 because there's no point so i think that eye of the storm should be 500,000 drop pod resources and it have an immense amount of drops when you complete it but on top of that also i think that that expedition should have its own specific set of legendary armors or legendary weapons now these legendary weapons and armors could be used anywhere especially the armors the armor set will have some sort of bonus for some sort of ability now that could be interchangeable so if i went through and completed eye of the storm the intrinsic set perk could be something like increases the damage on impale now every time you run it you could get the same chest piece over and over again but each chest piece has a different set bonus onto it so you might get the same chest piece but it is improvement to earthquake i don't know extra earthquake who knows it improves another aspect of your ability this means then that you have a reason to keep playing eye of the storm and get different sets of armors with different intrinsic they could all look the same it doesn't matter but they have in different intrinsic perks and you have to get free of the same build so you have to get free for the impale one or free for the earthquake one and so forth on the other characters too and then it can also have an extra intrinsic perk on the armor set to affect the way eye of the storm is so you might take less damage for instance off a specific enemy like a melee enemy or you know you could have something that is an intrinsic perk for something else that just makes it a little bit different maybe do more damage to a specific en enemy or a specific boss within eye of the storm that means then that people want to play eye of the storm the armors are unique the armors are rare getting a full armor set or a specific weapon is super super rare and it costs 500,000 drop pod resources to get into it so this is going to be like a real end game thing to go and do 
And to get those drop pod resources, you have to play the other expeditions. So there's another reason to keep running the same expeditions over and over again. And let's face it, there is nothing worth spending drop pod resources on in this game. This solves that problem. I've spoke about it multiple times on stream and in other videos, but there should be a raid-like experience at the end of everything. So once you've done challenge tiers, blah, 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 when you're all ready to be done with a character, have a raid available. This raid could have several, several bosses in. So let's say several bosses on the level of Moloch, like throughout the entire raid. A raid could take 40 to 50 minutes, even up to an hour. And you have five allies. So damage is higher for enemies on you. Their armors and health are higher, but you are required to have one healer, one tank, and three DPS. That means then, you know, if you're using something like a Technomancer that heals all your all your people around you, then you are useful. You could use a different setup instead of just always using what you normally would on a Technomancer. Devastator could be the tank, you know, you just go full golem. That gives you a reason to use those. And then the DPS guys can just nuke everything down then at the end when you complete the raid you get armors and weapons specific to the build that you're on so if you're a tank you're going to get tank stuff so there's a reason to always change up and play different characters different roles and that means then that the raids are going to be a long lasting thing and maybe even have them just once a week you know what i mean just put it on for like a weekend and you can only do it during the weekend and then it goes away for the rest of the week comes back the next weekend something like that something to look forward to playing every single week on this game and i do genuinely think the last thing i want to talk about here is world tier versus challenge tier once you complete the game and you get into challenge tiers the entirety of the game is useless it's pointless there's absolutely no reason to go back and do anything within the story whatsoever Everything drops at level 42. So first and foremost, I'd remove that cap and anything you collect out in the world gives you level 50 stuff. That way, then if you don't want to farm expeditions to get blue armors that you might upgrade to purples, you can just go kill bosses over and over again. Just, you know, if you want to just chill and be casual about it, you can do that in the normal story. So remove the cap at level 42 to level 50 in the story. Give people a reason to want to play the story. I would also change challenge tier levels to expedition tier levels. And I would change world tier to be an actual modifier to the game. So you could do expedition tier seven, which is like the very first time you can get a legendary drop from the drop pod. And you could do world tier 15. Now that world tier 15 already gives you a legendary chance that's higher than you would at you know world tier one so challenge tier seven you get x amount of legendary chance out of the drop pod then you have the extra buff from world tier to maybe get them to drop as well like from enemies and stuff so you might get even more legendaries but that challenge tier seven then becomes immensely more difficult because you're at world tier 15 you could even change the world tiers to have like negative modifiers on or something like can't heal as quick or you know you know your damage doesn't do much damage against x boss or x enemy you know you could put negative modifiers into it and then you can pick and choose what world tier you want so you could do expedition tier seven world tier seven you know kind of balance there and still get some extra stuff it makes world tier useful and it makes all the kind of buffs and extra things you get from world tier actually worth going after and like world tier is completely pointless in the game right now have it modify and change how expedition tiers work and then if you just want to do a normal expedition 15 like you're doing right now you just put the world tier to one and you just do the normal expeditions that we're doing so then you get expedition 15 and world tier 15 it becomes ridiculously difficult which means then you're forced into group play so you know you actually have to go and play in groups and it makes groups useful instead of you know just playing solo like i am right now and then you just need to sort out people kicking people and stuff from expeditions and to be honest that's really easy to fix the last enemy boss type thing in the expedition people can't join in to help you kill it so at the same point stop people from being able to be kicked until the drop pod is open or until you know they leave the expedition in some way shape or form do that and then that's fine completely negates any problems with you know having a real forced into a group situation and yeah so those are my ideas and 
what I would like to see Outriders do, because I'm not going to lie, right now, I'm, well, actually, today I really enjoy playing my Pyro, but for the most part, I'm just so much forward looking to playing other games like Returnal. And Outriders right now, at least from a developer standpoint and, you know, communicating with the community, it doesn't look like they have much plans to further the game experience. They're just really busy fixing patches. And I know, believe me, I don't judge them whatsoever. Making games is difficult. I'm not a games developer. What they're doing probably needs to be done ahead of anything else. But I really just wish they would mention something. Just be like, we're working on x game mode we're working on balancing this we're working on changing the skill trees i expect that soon i would be so happy with that because if they were saying they're going to switch up the skill trees it gives me a reason to go out and play the game and get armors ready for when they make the changes if that makes sense now i don't want this video to be that i'm moaning about the game because i do absolutely love the game it's been it's made me very happy to stream and to experience with other people it's just that the well of content the well of need and want to play the game dried up very very quickly for me but i want it to succeed because i absolutely love the game and i want to just do more on this game for longer into my life for the next six years i want to play no, i'm just kidding but you know i think you take my point it's just one of those games that came out at the perfect time when people absolutely needed a game like this to come out and it was really really good all the way through till challenge tier 15 and then it just dropped off massively for most people. So they really need to make something happen. And that's just my opinion, my views on the game and the current state that it's in. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Again, like, subscribe, notification bell, Twitter. Link is in the video description. Thank you for watching. I've been easy now. You guys have been awesome.